please join in 317, Alleluia, Alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. Let us celebrate. Alleluia, Alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. And the choirs of heaven chant it in the temple of the skies. Let the mountains skip with gladness and the joyful valleys ring with Hosanna in the highest to our Savior and our King. Alleluia, Alleluia, like the sun from out the ways. He has risen up in triumph from the darkness of the grave. He's the splendor of the nations. He's the lamp of endless day. He's the very Lord of glory who has risen up today. Alleluia, alleluia, blessed Jesus, make us rise from the life of this corruption to the life that never dies. May your glory be our portion when the days of time are past and the dead shall be awakened by the trumpet's mighty blast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the gospel of today, the Lord is telling us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I am going to prepare a place for you in my Father's house. Once I have prepared, and I will call you to myself so that you can be with me. As we come before the Eucharistic table, every faith journey is leading us to Jesus our Lord. Ultimately, we want to be with Him while we are here on earth, while we live our life. We need to do things that is pleasing Jesus our Lord that we can join him in the heavenly kingdom. For those moments where we fail to please the Lord, let us ask him pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of the will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory Lord God heavenly King oh God almighty Father to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy. 
Almighty ever living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the 12 called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Exalt you just in the from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. With the ten string lyre, chant his praise. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord. All his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord is full. Lord, let 
Let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices as acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. For it says in scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith. But for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Be God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father. 
that if we will be, it will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, have you been with me for long, so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing this work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. As we come to celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter, what a beautiful promise of Jesus. If there were no rooms, will I tell you that I am going to prepare a place for you? Once I have prepared a place for you, I will draw you to myself. Where I am, there you may be also. And secondly, Jesus is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. One who believes in me will do greater works than what I am doing now. When you compare this last part of the gospel, you will do greater works than what I am doing now. The first reading of today, St. Paul, St. Peter, beautiful vision he has got. Now he sees the people are complaining that they were not attended to. Only one sect of people were attended, the other were denied or neglected. And now he sees there are three important works that we need to do. The word of God, the sacramental ministry. We cannot forget also the service that we do to our one another. The service do we do to our brothers and sisters is also important. And much more important is the word of God and the sacramental ministry. But all three are important for our salvation. And that is what Jesus also says. You will do greater works than these, by which you will glorify me, and at the end you will glorify the Father. So for this greater work, you know, Peter realizes those 12 apostles are not enough. And he needs the hands of the everyone else. And so he says, let us pray and elect or select certain men who have a good standing and good reputation among you. And let them look after your needs. Interestingly, what St. Peter is doing today in the first reading of the Acts of the Apostle is not something new. Jesus has done it. So also in the Old Testament, Moses has done it. Or Yahweh God asked Moses to do it. If you read the book of Exodus, chapter 18, verse 13 onwards. It is a time when Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt. Now they have come to the foot of Mount Sinai. Book of Exodus chapter 18 verse 13 onwards. His father-in-law Jethro is coming to see Moses and the people of Israel because Jethro has, is, has heard about the marvels that the Lord has done in Egypt and at the crossing of the Red Sea. Now he comes to see his people. Moses was so delighted to see his father-in-law, but then Moses was getting occupied with the people. They have so many issues to settle. Remember, there are 600,000 of them. 
Now Moses alone is leading them. When they have difficult, like the first reading of today, in the early Christian community, one group is attended, other group is neglected. Same issue there. And now Jethro says to him, what were you doing, Moses? No, you see, the number of the people of Israel are too many. And they have conflicting situations. I have to listen to them, settle their issues. And Jethro says, if you do this, you will get worn out, and the people also will get worn out, then you will never reach the end. So what I'm telling you is, you appoint minor judges. You appoint minor judges according to the ability of the man. If he is capable of handling 50 people, appoint one. If he is capable of attending to 100 people, appoint one according to their ability. And you empower them. As apostles, they laid their hands on them and they were ordained deacons, empowering them. Then once they settle the issues, good. If they are not able, then let them come to you. You have more experience, then you can settle their issues. Later on, in book of Numbers, chapter 11, if you read, the Lord is telling to Moses, Moses, bring 70 other elders among you. Bring them to the tent of meeting. And I will take some of the spirits that is in you and I will distribute to them. Then they will also guide, lead your people. I will give them the wisdom that I gave to you, to them as well. You see, how the Lord Yahweh God is decentralizing the power so that all are attended to. And when you come to the book, the letter, the gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10, verse 1 onwards, Lord Jesus is calling those 72 others, the disciples, and saying to them, I am going to send you ahead of those places where I am going to go, two by two. And he gave them authority over the unclean spirits to cure the sick, to raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Brothers and sisters, Peter is just trying to follow his master Jesus the Lord. We cannot neglect the word of God. Or we can also neglect you. You are more important. And so... We will have these men who can attend to your need. Interesting thing is, the Hellenistic Jews, they are called the Greeks. Part, partly Jew, partly Greeks. So these Hellenistic Jews were complaining that only the Aramaic-speaking Hebrews were looked after. Others were not looked after. Now, Luke is giving those seven names. They are, in fact, the Greek-speaking noblemen. What Luke is trying to tell us, you have ability. You are capable of handling your own life situations. We don't need somebody from heaven above. You can handle your life situations. So select men and women among you. Last week, we were celebrating the Good Shepherd Sunday, or the Vocation Sunday. Select men among you or women among you who can be ordained ministers. Today, through the mouth of St. Peter, the Lord is telling, come up, serve the Lord, be at his service so that nobody is neglected among ourselves. The lay ministry, different types of works in the church, different types of charisms, which the same Spirit is giving, the fruits and the works of the Holy Spirit, that we all of us are called to serve the kingdom of God. Then tomorrow, all can acquire 
the room that Jesus is preparing in the Father's house. Today, brothers and sisters in Christ, we need trustworthy ministers, men and women, to serve God, to be a music minister, to be a lector, to be altar server, to be usher, to be a sacristan, that we all need. We need to build our church. That is what St. Paul, St. Peter, at the very beginning in the early Christian community is telling them. The second reading of today, St. Peter is telling, you were a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a people set apart. So brothers and sisters, today we cannot be silent. We cannot just be a listener alone. We cannot just come and participate the Holy Mass alone and go home, say that I have fulfilled my Sunday obligation and my God is going to give me my salvation. Definitely God is going to give us our, his salvation. That is what the Lord is promising through the gospel of today. If there were no rooms, I would have told you that I am going to prepare a room for you. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So in order to follow the way, the truth, and the life, we also need to be someone guiding the blind, guiding the stranger. Can I be his instrument today? I belong to the order of St. Vincent Pallotti, the Society of the Catholic Apostolate. St. Vincent Pallotti is the founder who founded this congregation in 1835, when he began the congregation before Second Vatican Council in Rome, he says, we are called to be an apostle. How? And he says, the vision of the society of the Catholic, that everybody must become a Catholic. And every Catholic must become good Catholic. And every good Catholic must become an apostle. Everybody must become a Catholic, and every Catholic must become good Catholic, and every good Catholic must become an apostle. We all are called to be an apostle in our own state of life. If you are a woman in your kitchen, if you are a man in your factory or in your office, at your desk, a child in the school, or a youth in the university, or a woman, or a, a doctor in the hospital, wherever we are, we are called to be an apostle. When we do our duty faithfully, we are fulfilling that apostleship. Today, brothers and sisters, don't neglect your vocation. God has called each one of us in a unique way. That's why St. Peter is telling in his letter, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, dedicated people. Am I a dedicated person in the service of God? There are three things, the word of God, the sacramental ministry, the service ministry, very important, essential for our salvation, for my salvation, for my neighbor's salvation. Let us give ourselves entirely for the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's all join together and profess our faith. I believe in one God. Saints, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, not made, born for such a bigger Father, through whom all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we stand around the Eucharistic table, let us present to the Lord all our praise and petitions. For the needs of the Universal Church, St. Patrick Parish, and in particular for Anne Langlos on a birthday remembrance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all deacons, as those ordained to serve, may God empower them in revealing the light of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public officials, may God give them clarity to lead with mercy and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those nearing death, may the Holy Spirit comfort them, bringing the peace of Christ to their final hours on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may Jesus draw us together in unity as a holy people, glorifying God the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in faith, May Jesus lead them to the place he has prepared as they rejoice with the saints forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the homebound, that they may see the love of the Lord in those who visit and take care of them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the beautiful calling that you gave to all of us to be Catholics to be your followers. And as you have empowered us with the power of the Holy Spirit, may you continue to guide us that we may be able to give ourselves willingly for the salvation of ourselves and of our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and wicked from the land, become for us a bread of life. Lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. Twas great. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who oh, by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice 
have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead. Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Your Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to, lo to love the Atma gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceased to offer himself for us, but pleads, defends us, and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more. The Lamb, once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with the Paschal joy, every land, every people, exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly in his passion he took bread giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for so this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have all this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with the Francis of Pope, Alan, our Archbishop, all the assisting bishop, the order of bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph has passed, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, St. Patrick, St. Vincent Pallotti, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be called to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with the will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the peace of Christ. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should end under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us everlasting life.
Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive honor and glory. Worthy is the one who believed to receive the goodness of God. Worthy are you, O Paschal Lamb, wisdom and strength belong now to you. You lay down your life and died on the cross. We become a people of Remember, most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fly to thy protection implored thy help, sought thine intercession, was left unaided. In spite of this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin. Virgin of Virgins, my mother, to thee do I come. Before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions. But in hear, thy mercy, hear and answer me. me. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with the heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in heaven with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. In heaven the blessed your glory proclaim on earth 
your fairness. 